day everyone for today's video i will tell a story where we would learn a lesson especially for those family who had already a family member who departed i am kate rafonzel asherto from education department at colegio ng pantukan but before we start eyes in the book open your minds open your ears close your lips hands on lap and sit like a pretzel the title of the story is the mat it is written by the filipino national artist francisco arceliana and was published in the year 1938 for the angeles family mr angeles homecoming from his periodic inspection trips was always an occasion for celebration but his homecoming from a trip to the south was fated to be more memorable than say of the others he had written from marveles i have just met a marvelous mat weaver a real artist and i shall have a surprise for you i asked him to weave a sleeping mat for every one of the family he is using many different colors and for each mat the dominant color is that of our respective birthstones i am sure that the children will be very pleased i know you will be i can hardly wait to show them to you nana emilia read the letter that morning and again and again every time she had a chance to leave the kitchen in the evening when all the children were home from school she asked her oldest son jose to read the letter at dinner table the children became very much excited about the mats and talk about them until late into the night this she wrote her husband when she labored over a reply to him for days after that mats continued to be the chief topic of conversation among the children finally from lopez mr angeles wrote again i am taking the bicol express tomorrow i have the mats with me and they are beautiful god willing i shall be home to join you at dinner the letter was read aloud during the noon meal talk about the mat flared up again like wildfire i like the feel of mat antonio the third child said i like the smell of new mat oh but these mats are different interposed susana the fifth child they have our names woven into them and in our ascribed colors too the children knew what they were talking about they knew just what a decorative mat was like it was not anything new or strange in their experience that was why they were so excited about the mat they had such a mat in the house one they seldom used a mat older than any one of them this mat had been given to nana emilia by her mother when she and mr angeles were married and it had been with them ever since it had served on the wedding night and had not since been used except on special occasions it was a very beautiful mat not really meant to be ordinarily used it had green leaf borders and a lot of gigantic red roses woven into it in the middle running the whole length of the mat was the lettering emilia e jaime recuerdo the letters were in gold nana emilia always kept that mat in her trunk when any one of the family was taken ill the mat was brought out and the patient slept on it and had it all to himself every one of the children had some time in their lives slept on it not a few had slept on it more than once
Nana Emilia and her eldest girl who had long returned from the kitchen were watching the proceedings quite one swift movement with the scissors snip and the bundle was lost turning to nana emilia mr angeles joyfully cried these are the mats bling mr angeles picked up the topmost mat in the bundle this i believe is yours bling. nana emilia stepped forward to the light wiping her still moist hands against the folds of her skirt and with a strange young shyness received the mat the children watched the spectacle silently and then broke into delighted though a little self-conscious laughter nana emilia unfolded the mat without a word it was a beautiful mat to her mind even more beautiful than the one she received from her mother on her wedding there was a name in the very center of it emilia the letters were large done in green flowers cadena de amor were woven in and out among the letters the border was a long winding twig of cadena de amor the children stood about the spreading mat the air was punctuated by their breathless exclamation of delight. It is beautiful, Jaime. It is beautiful. Nana Emilia's voice broke, and she could not say any more. And this, I know, is my own, and Mr. Angeles of the next mat in the bundle. The mat was rather simply decorated. The design almost ostered, and the only colors used were purple and gold. The letters of the name Jaime were in purple. And this for you, Marcelina. Marcelina was the oldest child. She had always thought her name too long. It had been one of her worries with regard to the mat. How on earth? Are they going to weave all of the letters of my name into my mat? She had asked of almost everyone in the family. Now, it delighted to her to see her whole name spelled out on the mat. Even if the letters were a little small. Besides, there was a device above her name which pleased Marcelina very much. It was in the form of a lyre, finely done in three colors. Marcelina was a student of music and was quite a proficient pianist. And this is for you, Jose. Jose was the second child. He was a medical student already in the third year of medical school. Over his name, the symbol of Esculapius was woven into the mat. You are not to use this mat until the year of your internship, Mr. Angeles was saying. This is yours, Antonia, and this is yours, Juan, and this is yours, Jesus. Mat after mat was unfolded. On each of the children's mats, there was somehow an appropriate device. At least, all the children had been shown their individual mats. The air was filled with their excited talk, and through it all, Mr. Angeles was saying over and over again in his deep voice, You are not to use these mats until you go to the university. Then, Nana Emilia noticed bewilderingly that there were some more mats remaining to be unfolded. But Jaime, Nana Emilia said, wondering with the evident repudiation, there are some more mats. Only Mr. Angeles seemed to have heard Nana Emilia's words. He suddenly stopped talking as if he had been jerked away from a pleasant fantasy. A puzzled, reminiscent look came into his eyes, superseding the deep and quiet delight that had been briefly there and when he spoke, his voice was different. Yes, Emilia, said.
said Mr. Atkins. There are three more maps to unfold. The others who aren't here. Nana Emilia caught her breath. There was a swift constriction in her throat. Her face paled and she could not say anything. The self-centered talk of the children also died. There was a silence as Mr. Angeles picked up the first of the remaining mats and began slowly unfolding it. The mat was almost as austere in design as Mr. Angeles' own and it had a name. There was no symbol or device above the name, only a blank space emptiness. The children knew the name, but somehow the name, the letters spelling the name seemed strange to them. Then Nana Emilia found her voice. You know, Jaime, you didn't have to. Nana Emilia said her voice hurt sure, and surely written. Mr. Angeles held his tears back. There was something swift and savage in the movement. Do you think I'd forgotten? Do you think I had forgotten them? Do you think I could forget them? This is for you, Josefina. And this is for you, Victoria. And this is for you, Concepcion. Mr. Angeles called the names rather than utter them. Don't, Jaime, please don't, was all that Nana Emilia managed to say. Is it fair to forget them? Would it be just to disregard them? Mr. Angeles demanded rather than asked. His voice had risen shrill, almost hysterical. It was also stern and sad and somehow vindictive. Mr. Angeles had spoken almost as if he were a stranger. Also, he had spoken as if from a deep, grudgingly silent, long bewildered sorrow. The children hear the words exploding in the silence. They wanted to turn away and not see the face of their father, but they could neither move nor look away. His eyes held them, his voice held them where they were. They seemed rooted to the spot. Nana Emilia shivered once or twice, bowed her head, gripped her clasped hands between her thighs. There was a terrible hush. The remaining mats were unfolded and the names which were with infinite slowness revealed. Seemed strange and stranger still. The colors not bright, but deathly dull. The separate letters, spelling out the names of the dead among them, did not seem to glow or shine with a festive sheen as did the other living names. So, that's the end of the story. The moral of the story is, even if one of our family members is gone, we should always keep them in our hearts. Always remember that we should love our parents every day and our children as well when we already have a family because our parents is only and the last person who will only give an unconditional love. Thank you for listening. I hope you understand, learn, and see the message of the story. Bye!